Alright, thanks for watching and welcome to the hardest question on the hardest linear algebra exam. Now, a little bit of background because you'll probably be like, hey, this wasn't too hard. So I gave this exam back in 2019 and when I wrote the exam, I was like, okay, this is not a bad question. And in fact, when I gave this exam then, uh, the first student who handed it in, he got it right. And at this point, I was relieved. I was like, I didn't write an insane question. But it turns out he was the only student out of 100 who got it right. So it's probably a slightly trickier question, but it's up to you to judge. So maybe you can solve it, we'll see. Now, the first part of the question, very standard, so it's just calculate a van der Morn determinant. So calculate the determinant of 1, 1, 1, 1, x, y, z, t, x squared, y squared, z squared, t squared, and x cubed, y cubed, z cubed, and t cubed. Now, only a fool would use cofactor expansion to do this. Instead, let's do it a little bit more clever way. Uh, let's use row reduction. So for instance, let's subtract this row from this row. So times minus one and do this with the same spiel here, this, and then one more time. Okay. Then if you row reduce it, you get something like 1x, x squared, x cubed, and then 0, y minus x, y squared minus x squared, y cubed minus x cubed, and then sim with z, so z minus x, z squared minus x squared, z cubed minus x cubed, and 0, t minus x, t squared minus x squared, t cubed minus x cubed. Now, I know there are other ways of doing this. Some people, they do it with columns, which is the better way, actually, for doing this. But let's just do it my way, okay? like, like Frank Sinatra said. <laughs> All right. And the nice thing is, there is a line simplification here. So we have 1x, x squared, x cubed. And then 0, y minus x. Now, y squared minus x squared factors out with y minus x times y plus x. And even y cubed minus x cubed can factors out. So it's y minus x times, let me see, x squared or y squared plus xy plus x squared. And then same spiel here, so z minus x z minus x, z plus x, and then z minus x, z squared plus xz plus x squared, and then one more time, 0, t minus x, t minus x times t plus x, t minus x, t squared plus xt, because I'm so excited, I guess, <laughs> plus x squared, and finish the determinant. Now, why is that awesome? Because they're common factors. So here, there's a y minus x common factor, y minus x, y minus x. Same thing here, z minus x, z minus x, z minus x, and then t minus x, t minus x, t minus x which means that all those common factors, they come out. Not only is there a common factor, but notice, if you expand it out along the first, oops, if you expand it out along the first column, you get one times this determinant, zero times whatever, zero, zero. So in the end, you're actually just left with the determinant of the smaller matrix. So you're left with y minus x, times z minus x times t minus x. Again, because they come out all of each factor and one y plus x, uh, y squared plus xy plus x squared, and then one uh, z plus x, z plus x, and then z squared plus xz plus x squared. And lastly, one uh, t plus x, 
and then t squared plus xt plus x squared. And now, of course, we can play the same spiel. So subtract this from this and subtract this from this and you get a nicer determinant. So then you still have those factors uh, y minus x, z minus x, t minus x. And then let's see, we still have 1, y plus x, y squared plus xy plus x squared. And then 0, again 1 minus 1. This minus this, if you do that, the excess cancels out and you get z minus y. And then let's see, z squared minus y squared plus xz minus xy. Okay. And then x squared minus x squared, that cancels out. And then same thing here, 1 minus 1, here the x cancels out, so t minus y, and then t squared minus y squared, and then plus xt minus xy. Let's see what we get, but the nice thing is already you can see if you expand it out the first column, this thing disappears and you're just left with an easier determinant. So you are left with, let's see, uh, y minus x, z minus x, t minus x, times this determinant, so z minus y, and then this you can factor out at z minus y times z plus y. And here we have a common factor of x, so we have x times z minus y. And here we have t minus y, again t minus y times t plus y. And then plus, I believe, x times t minus y which is amazing because there's another uh, common factor, which is z minus y as well as t minus y. Okay. And so what we're left with is, so y minus x, z minus x, t minus x. So you see for every variable you're subtracting x times z minus y times t minus y. And then the determinant of 1 of z plus y here, plus x, and then 1, t plus y, plus x. And this one is easy to calculate, hopefully, at this point. So you left with the following, y minus x, z minus x, t minus x, z minus y, <coughs> t minus y, and this times this, so t plus y plus x minus 1 times this, so minus z minus y minus x. And the beautiful thing is the y's and x's cancel out. And so in the end, we have the following result, the van der Moen determinant. It's simply y minus x times z minus x times t minus x times z minus y times t minus y times t minus z. I believe that's correct, hopefully, up to maybe a sign mistake or not. But anyway, uh, so again, all you do is, you know, from y, z, and t, you subtract x, then from z and t, you subtract y, and then from t, you subtract z. So again, just to recap, because again, we we're still not at the hard part of the question. So 1, 1, 1, 1, x, uh, y, z, t, I wonder if I wrote it, yeah, I wrote it this way, and then x squared, uh, y squared, z squared, t squared, and then x cubed, y cubed, z cubed, t cubed. This determinant is y minus x, z minus x, t minus x, z minus y, okay, and then time, bah. z minus y, t minus y, and then t minus c. So that question, I would say a quarter of the students got it right, because they, they all tried to do a, a Bomberman, which is not, not good, okay? All right, so that was the first question. Now comes a trickier one, B. And that's the question only one person got right. And again, let's see if you get it right. So here's a problem statement. Let x not 
x1, x2, x3 be arbitrary, be distinct, sorry. So it's very important that they're different. And why not y1, y2, y3 be arbitrary? So not necessarily distinct. Show that there exists a unique cubic polynomial that goes through those points. In other words, show that there is a unique polynomial. And again, might be degenerate. That's fine. Okay. Polynomial P of X equals A plus BX plus CX squared plus DX cubed such that p of x1, or p of x0 equals y0, p of x1 equals y1, and then p of x2 equals y2, and then p of x3 equals y3. So let me tell, show you a little picture of what's going on. So suppose I give you four distinct points, okay. again, with the property that the x-coordinates, they're all different. Okay. x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. Then what this sh problem shows is that there's exactly one cubic polynomial, again, possibly degenerate, that goes through those four points. I believe this is called Lagrange interpolation or something like that. Okay. Now, the question is, what does it have to do at all with the first part? Because remember, there was this first part. And for this, let's see what it means for uh, P. Oh, one second. Uh, let's see what it means for P of X naught to be Y naught. By definition of P, it means A plus B X naught plus C X naught squared plus D X naught cubed equals Y naught. Because why not, right? <laughs> and then similarly, P of X1 equals Y1. That gives you A plus B X1 plus C X1 squared plus d x1 cubed equals y1. And you can probably see the pattern. Then we have a plus b x2 plus c x2 squared plus d x2 cubed equals y2. And lastly, a plus b x3 plus c x3 squared plus d x3 cubed equals y3. And again, what is the goal? The goal is to find A, B, C, and D. Now, here's a beautiful thing. Remember, X0, X1, X2, X3, and Y0, Y1, Y2, Y3, they're fixed. So, in fact, interestingly, and that's why it's called linear algebra, we actually get a linear system for our coefficients. Because it turns out, you can write this as follows. A is A times 1. So 1 times x naught times x naught squared times x naught cubed times A, B, C, D equals Y naught. And then same thing here. 1. X1. X1 squared. X1 cubed. A, B, C, D is Y1. 1. X2. X2 squared x2 cubed is y2, and 1, x3, x3 squared, x3 cubed, a, b, c, d is y3. So we have a system of equations, and essentially what we need to figure out is, is there a unique solution? But notice, this is of the form, precisely, ax equals b. And now the question is, this raises the question, uh, 
when does the system ax equals b have a unique solution well it has a unique solution if and only if the determinant of this matrix is non-zero but what is the determinant of a so basically the answer is show that determinant of a is non-zero but what is the determinant of a well that's the determinant of this big junk like one 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 uh, was x naught x uh, well, let me see how i wrote it x naught i believe x one x2 x3 x naught squared x1 squared x2 squared x3 squared and then x uh, naught cubed x1 cubed x2 cubed x3 cubed but what is this it's a random one determinant is back in the form of a so that's why I tortured people with a question A, and I believe all that's left, what this is, this becomes, again, by our previous question, I think x1 minus x0, x2 minus x0, x3 minus x0, and then uh, now um, x2 minus x1, x3 minus x1, and I believe simply a x3 minus x2. Okay. But here's a beautiful thing. Remember I told you that x0, x1, x2, x3, they're distinct. Which means that all of those factors, they're non-zero. So this determinant it's just a product of non-zero factors, so in fact, it is non-zero. And because the determinant is non-zero, this system has a unique solution, which means that there are unique numbers, A, B, C, and D, such that all those equations are satisfied, and therefore, there exists a unique polynomial of this form that goes to those points. And I believe you can actually construct this polynomial. And I think there was another video I've done on this. But anyway, so I don't know if you solved the hardest question on the hardest linear algebra test, but just one out of my 100 students solved it. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.